G'day everyone, today we're getting the built scooter engine running, hopefully. So before we bolt the head down, I'm just going to make sure I can actually get the reed cage bolted on. We're going to use some of this Loctite flange sealant stuff. I'm not sure if it's the best one for the job, but we'll give it a go and see what happens. It looks like if you ate it, it would taste like grape flavour. Obviously normally you wouldn't worry too much about reaching these bolts because you'd think Honda would design it so you can get to the reed cage, or like the reed manifold thing bolts without taking the head off. Because this engine's been ported and this is an aftermarket one, I wasn't too sure, but looks like I'd be able to reach the bolts with or without the head on there. Now that that's on, we can put the head on. Some people, when they're trying to get higher compression, run no head gasket. Because I've machined the head down, we'll chuck the head gasket in there to start with, and then we might think about removing it later. Now these are supposed to be 9 to 12 foot-pounds, from what I gathered googling it. I don't know if torque wrench that small, so I'm just going to use the old icrometer. Click, 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 click. Torque to spec. Now that the head's torqued down, I can turn this over by hand, and it's actually got compression, which is nice. The main thing is the piston doesn't feel like it's hitting the head of the cylinder. But what I would like to check is the squish band. So you remember there's that area on the cylinder head that I machined that sort of matches up really closely to the piston. All we do to check the gap is get a piece of solder because it's like nice soft lead. We put it in the head, turn the piston all the way up until we squash the solder. Oh, it only just touches it. So you can see we now have a flat, a flattened out bit on the end of the solder. We can measure that with the verniers. Comes out to 0.6, which is on the tight side, but I did machine it extra, so I thought it would be tighter. And you can see from the pattern of like the shape of the way the solder's squished, we've got more squish towards the edges and less in the middle. So I think that's roughly where I wanted it. If it was like didn't even squash it, then it's too big, we'd have to redo something. But that is within the realms of what I think might be something similar to what it's supposed to be. So you can chuck the reed cage in next and the carb. Very more grape flavoured sealant. Wonder if this works at this stuff? Probably, maybe. Loctite's pretty good, but I don't know. Everyone else uses a gasket for this, but I don't have a gasket. I don't want to cut one out, so Loctite flange sealant it is. Now, I'm missing a lot of parts for the drive line of this, but I just screwed this back on so the starter, like, flywheel is on there, so we've got something to start it off. Last thing to chuck on is the carb. Now, there's no vacuum lines or anything needed here. The only line is this, which is for the oil feed. We're going to run it off oil mixed in with the fuel rather than oil injection just to start it off with. I could plug it back into here, but I think it's still going to suck air through that tube. So I might just put something in the end of this to plug it for our test runs and then we'll set up the oil injection once it's actually in the scooter. Now to get that engine running it's going to need some electronics and so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the plugs off this scooter and see if I can just put the engine on the ground next to it and like run it off life support just to get the ignition and stuff going. Okay so hopefully this should be as simple as unplugging the starter motor from this one. This goes here and plugging in the stator side and then we're ready to test fire it. Okay so I've got, I've got to chuck my horrendous exhaust that I made on here. I was going to do a video on making this exhaust but I want to sort of refine my strategy for making it a bit better so there will be a video on expansion chambers but I need some practice first but if you want to see the expansion chamber videos or how I made it make sure you tell me in the comments so I know people are actually interested in that because it's a bit of effort to make a video about it because it's kind of complicated but I think it could be interesting. Alright, so, I think we're good to go. It's up on a crate, just so we get high enough to plug the spark plug in. I've got a piece of wire down... As I was saying, I have a piece of wire for the throttle hooked into the carb. We've got our ignition, trigger, timing, starter motor, spark. The choke's manual now, rather than vacuum operated. We'll squirt some fuel down the carb, see if it fires. The mix I'm running is 30 to 1 for oil, which is too high for this engine, but I guess this counts as like a break-in. So... We're running it a little bit higher than normal, but we'll see if it even sparks first. So, I guess we'll just hit it, see what happens. Hey, that sounded like a spark already. Just turning over, I can tell this sounds like it's much higher compression. Oh, the engine probably has to be grounded to the chassis of this. Okay, I'll do that. Give that another go. Cool, so it definitely sounds like it's firing. Which means, it might be time to actually hook the fuel tank up to it.
<laughs> that runs for longer than I expected considering it doesn't have a fuel tank, but it's definitely running. It sounds pretty angry. I can hear from the way the starter motor turns over, it's definitely higher compression than the stock engine. Oh god, it's all spraying out of the car everywhere. Stop. Um, that's bad. I think the uh, I think the carb floats not sealing. Let's have a look at that because there's not even any fuel in the tank anymore. It all just went. Oh, we just came straight out on the floor. <clears throat> okay, we're back. There was a little piece of aluminium stuck in the needle, stopping it from sealing. It's as though someone had rigged it up to a dodgy homemade fuel tank with no fuel filter. So hopefully this time it should not piss oil all over the floor. Ah, uh, fuel. Well, actually, because it's two stroke, it's fuel and oil all over the floor. So now the floor is be oily, which is good because it won't rust. Cool. Well, it's leaking fuel again, so that's good. But other than that, sounds good. Can't even see it leaking fuel because the camera is focused on the wrong bit. Looks like it's leaking fuel off that nut thing on the bottom of the carb. Okay, so I think that concludes it for tonight's video. Apart from fuel all over the floor, that worked pretty well. Sounds good. Sounds revvy. It was bogging a little bit. I think it needed an air filter on it to get the vacuum to pull the fuel through. That doesn't really matter. It runs. It didn't seem to be doing anything weird. It didn't make like a knocking noise. It didn't have anything crazy going on. It wasn't. It didn't instantly seize up. It has good compression. So I think considering the piston and everything that's in this, that's pretty good. So I will now go and hunt down the parts I need to put the clutch and everything together. And the next video on the scooter should probably be a test ride. So make sure you subscribe to see that. I mean, for 10,000 subscribers, video every Friday. It's killing me to keep doing that because it's really hard, but I'm going to stick to it till I get to 10,000 and then maybe take a week or two off. But help me get there. And yeah, other than that, I'll see everybody in the next video. Hopefully you like this one. Let me know what you thought. And goodbye.